Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 553, written by Ganimao Farakis. I'm in grave danger. I have a galley style kitchen. I was washing dishes and my phone was on the counter behind me. I was listening to Mr. Revenant stories. I turned around from the sink to grab another container to wash and noticed my phone had gone from the video to the comment section of the video. I looked closer and noticed that it was queued up to reply to a comment. A message was already written in, but had not been sent. It said, I'm in danger. All in lowercase like that. My phone automatically autocorrects lowercase I'm to I'm uppercase. It is possible a water droplet from my dish gloves flung onto my phone when I reached it, but I don't think it could type a whole message. After I checked on my husband, I called my mom and texted my brother. Everyone was fine. About a half hour later, when I went back to the kitchen, I was momentarily overcome with nausea and felt sweaty, but it passed after a few minutes. I have no idea what that was. I didn't feel like I was the one in danger. Maybe just a strange, unexplainable glitch and the nausea was unrelated? Or was it a message from someone, but I can't think of who it would be. Any thoughts? Also, I scanned my phone for viruses or malware. I didn't find any. I don't know anyone personally who would want to hack my phone. I'm basically a hermit. I have agoraphobia and work from home. I haven't received any weird texts. I don't have any apps that I didn't download myself from a play store. It's still possible, but it seems like my phone wasn't hacked. The next day, I put my phone in the same spot and was washing dishes again while listening to YouTube, and nothing happened. Case Notes, file number 553. So this is one of those glitches that makes you question what entities exist that we can't see. You asked if you think the sudden nausea afterwards was a coincidence. It could be, of course, but my gut tells me that something was indeed controlling your phone. We know that spirits can manipulate and even generate EM fields, which our phones use in many ways to function. Could a spirit have typed that? The question then is, why would they? If they're already dead, can spirits experience pain? What kind of a threat could a spirit have? The danger aspect doesn't really add up towards it being a spirit. And if your phone was hacked, why would they type, I'm in danger, without specifying some way to know who they were or where they were? Or perhaps it was your own message from the future, trying to warn yourself. But nothing I think of here fits perfectly, primarily because the message was so short and incomplete. There's nothing you can really do with it, besides be befuddled. Case file number 554, written by Reese Peace. Milo, the Pitbull. No, Milo, the Beagle? I'm not sure where to even start. This all happened two mornings ago. I honestly feel crazy. I can only think of three possible situations. One, my friends and family are playing the most elaborate prank I've ever heard of. Two, I'm going crazy. 3. I woke up in an alternate universe. So for context, I got my dog Milo 4 years ago from my cousin. He was a 1 year old pit bull at the time. When I got him, my girlfriend was worried because we have a 1 bedroom apartment and she thought a pit bull may be too large for our apartment. So Friday morning I got out of bed to feed Milo and take him for a walk. I go into my kitchen and there is sitting a dog I don't recognize. It's a smallish beagle, and I've literally never seen it before and have no idea whose dog it is. My mind starts racing because I'm not sure how it could have gotten into my apartment. My first thought is that my girlfriend must be sitting a dog. She works the third shift from 1am to 9.30am. I go to bed around 10pm every night, so I was assuming I went to bed and one of her friends must have asked her to watch their dog. I sent her a text asking whose dog it is. I decided I'll walk Milo and this dog separately, because I've never had to walk two dogs at once. I go to the bathroom to find Milo, because that's the only place he could be hanging out. I walk into the bathroom and it's empty. I call for him, and here comes the beagle? I'm confused, but again, I assume my girlfriend must have something to do with this. Maybe she took Milo somewhere and didn't go to work, and didn't get a chance to tell me. At this time, I notice the dog has a collar with a name tag. 
I reach down to read it and my stomach drops. It says Milo. I was kind of freaked out but I honestly thought it was a coincidence. I text my girlfriend again and ask where she and Milo are and that I'm going to take this dog for a walk and look for Milo. I go out and I'm looking everywhere in the neighborhood for Milo. I was really worked up and didn't notice I had some missed messages from my girlfriend. They basically say she has no idea what I'm talking about and freaking out about where Milo is. As I go to respond, I see her pull into our neighborhood. She parks and jumps out of the car and runs up to the beagle crying and saying, I thought he was gone, where did you find him? I ask what she means and she says you said Milo was gone and I said yes, he is. And she gets this weird look on her face and asks if this was some corny prank. We watch YouTube prank couples a lot. I start crying from frustration and tell her, no, Milo is really missing. I tell her how I woke up to this dog and that Milo was just gone. She still thinks I'm messing with her and says that she doesn't understand the prank and kind of gets annoyed and starts to take the dog inside. She tells me my prank was stupid and didn't work. I start getting mad and telling her this isn't a prank and that Milo is really gone and she screams, no the hell he isn't, he's right here, what are you even talking about? Something about how serious she was completely devastated me and everything just kind of clicked that this dog was really Milo? I start freaking the hell out and telling her that Milo is a pit bull and that I don't know what the hell is going on. I pull out my phone to get pictures of pit bull Milo and everything is gone, no photos of Milo at all. There's just a mix of pictures I remember and ones that I don't. There's pictures of this beagle Milo on my phone though. I start having a panic attack. I call my mom. She has no idea what I'm calling about. I message my friends in our Snapchat group chat. They're clueless as well. I call my cousin that knows Milo and she tells me that he's definitely a beagle. I don't know what's going on. Milo was 100% a pit bull. My city doesn't let pit bulls at the dog park. So we've never even been. This is something I talk to my girlfriend about a lot. How would I have memories like that? My family thinks I'm joking. Meanwhile, my girlfriend wants me to go to the doctor. I feel like I'm going insane and I can't stop crying because I want Milo back and if I'm in some other timeline, I'm afraid to find out what else is different. One thing that I've noticed is that anyone I bring this up with has a bad reaction to me mentioning an alternate timeline. They get visibly upset. I'm so lost y'all. I'm writing this more for documentation than anything. So in case I wake up tomorrow and everything's normal, maybe this post will still be here for me to show my friends and family. If anyone has any idea what caused this, please let me know. Case file number 555, written by Drink Beer and Fight, The Universe's Mr. K. I run a custom trim shop slash hardwood lumber yard. Both glitches involve long time customers, guys who I know on site. The first time it happened was around 2010. We had a few contractors who did enough business with us that they had accounts. They could just sign for material rather than usual payment on delivery model. I'm not saying all contractors are shady, but there are a lot of fly by the night guys who say they'll pay when the jobs are done, but you never hear from them again. I get that not everyone has the capital to lay out for material, but I've been burned enough to know the difference between an established business and the cash on delivery guys. Anyway, call this customer Mr. C. One day, Mr. C comes in and his left hand is heavily bandaged. Obviously, I asked what happened. Mr. C was cutting a piece of plywood on a table saw by himself. Halfway through, it started to fall off the table. He put his hand down to push it back onto the table and it sliced the top of his middle finger, half of his ring finger and all of his pinky finger off. We talked about it and agreed how table saws are the most dangerous tools. I actually know more guys who've been injured from nail guns but I was being sympathetic. Anyway, I didn't see Mr. C for 5 or 6 weeks. I saw he had an order ready for pickup one day and made sure I was in the shop. I wanted to say hi and check on how he was holding up after his accident. When I walked up to the loading dock, Mr. C and one of our employees were loading red oak baseboards into his box van. Mr. C was using both hands, both fully fingered hands. I didn't say anything, I just helped them load the material into the van and made sure the paperwork was in order 
After he pulled out, I said something to my employee about how I thought Mr. C had cut his fingers from his left hand. My employee just looked at me weird and said he didn't know what I was talking about. This employee knew about Mr. C's accident. He was there the day Mr. C showed up in bandages. I know that we discussed it and nail guns. No one in the shop knew what I was talking about, so I let it go. Mr. C officially retired a few years ago with all of his fingers. My second glitch actually had a witness. July 2018, I was eating lunch in the break room with one of our older employees. We weren't talking, just eating our microwave leftovers and staring at our phones. He grunts and says, Mr. K died. I was taken aback and he showed me the obituary. Mr. K had been killed in an automobile accident the previous weekend. Arrangements were scheduled at the local funeral home on Friday. I felt bad that I couldn't go to the calling hours. Mr. K had been a friend of my grandpa's. They were both carpenters. My kid had friends coming for a sleepover that night, and I wasn't going to cancel it to go to calling hours for a guy I really didn't know. My dad was going anyway, so our family was still represented. Fast forward to January 2019. That same employee walks into the office and says he has a customer that requires my assistance. That's a usual code for, here's a Karen that we don't want to deal with. I walk out to the warehouse, and standing there is Mr. K. Longtime employee walks behind Mr. K, looking at me with his eyebrows raised so high they are disappearing into his ball cap. I was stunned. I greeted him, shook his hand, I asked him how he's been doing. He said he's been fine. We found the couple of boards he needed for his project. He paid and was on his way. As he was pulling out, my employee said, I swear I thought he was dead. Amazed that I wasn't the only one this time, I agreed. We talked for a while about how we both remember reading the obituary. I went back to the office and called my dad. I asked him if Mr. K was alive. He said he hadn't heard otherwise. Dad didn't remember going to a funeral. I've only talked to my employee about it one other time. We just chalked it up to an oddity, but it still weirds me out.